water. Every living thing needs it in order to survive. The Great Lakes are a binational region directly surrounded by eight of the United States and the Canadian province of Ontario. The Great Lakes alone consist of more than one-fifth of the world's fresh water, or approximately six quadrillion gallons of water. Just for perspective, that is enough water to cover the 48 contiguous states in nine and a half feet of water from coast to coast. The Great Lakes provide water for 40 million people with an additional 56 million gallons for agricultural and industrial activities. But today, we are going to take a look at what is under the surface. Our lakes are under attack. The Great Lakes is now home to nearly 180 non-native species, and a new one is discovered every 28 weeks on average. Species like the Asian carp and the sea lamprey are competing with native species for food and shelter. Regional extinction is on the rise. But today, we're going to look at a threat that is not so large in size, but they have a huge impact on our lakes. The zebra mussel. These little mollusks are named after their zigzag striped pattern on their shell. These creatures can live anywhere from three to nine years and can survive up to two weeks out of water. The zebra mussel is native to freshwater lakes in southern Russia and Ukraine. They have been accidentally introduced to numerous areas and have become an invasive species in multiple countries worldwide. They were speculated to have been introduced in the 1980s by ballast water discharge ships from Europe. Zebra mussels can cost industries millions of dollars, and were speculated to cost the U.S. an estimated $3.1 billion just between 1993 and 1999. Spreading everywhere, onto our docks, hulls, motors, and coating our pipes, zebra mussels are able to produce very rapidly and completely cover a pipe in the short period of six months. A female zebra mussel can expel 40,000 eggs in a single reproductive cycle and up to 1 million in a spawning season. A single zebra mussel colony can surpass 100,000 mussels per square meter. This rapid population growth makes it hard for fish to spawn since zebra mussels tend to populate the same areas fish like to lay their eggs, piles of rocks and boulders that contain small crevices. They can also attach themselves to native mussels, which causes them to become stationary and can no longer filter feed. I bet you can use your imagination to figure out what that leads to. Zebra mussels litter beaches in beachfront property. These tiny, razor-sharp shells might make your beach day a little unpleasant. A decrease in public beach use has been seen in areas without the proper beach sweepers, which can cost at least $130,000. The beachfront property owners are definitely going to want to fix the zebra mussel infestation. Well, probably. Studies show that these mussels affect the water clarity due to their ability to filter about one liter of water per day per mussel. So, a bigger infestation, the clearer the water, which could possibly cause the property price to go up. Well, depending on your timing. After a certain amount of time, the mussels can cause an overgrowth of green film-like algae on the top of the water. Mussels filter out so much of the plankton and suspended solids in the water that it can increase the growth of aquatic plants. When these plants die and decay, it makes the water go low in oxygen and leads to an excessive amount of blue-green algae, which can be toxic to humans and other animals. Moreover, the lack of food left for the other animals in the area causes an ecosystem collapse. So I'll let the property owners decide where they stand on that one. Even if the water looks nicer, that still means that there is less food for the other native species to eat, and therefore, your future fishing experiences aren't going to be as much fun. This onslaught of non-native species is wreaking havoc all over the United States, with very few successful eradications and dozens of infestations. Although the status of this issue isn't super urgent, it is classified as least concern, but due to their rapid reproduction, it is becoming more and more of an issue. Things like proper maintenance, strict regulations, and new engineering designs are contributing solutions. There are many resources that can show you how you can help with this issue. Most sources recommend cleaning, draining, and drying your water gear every time you take it out of the water to prevent further spread of the microscopic larvae.
There has recently been a new infestation of zebra mussels infecting moss balls. If you ever find an infected moss ball, it is recommended that you use one of three ways. Freeze it for at least 24 hours, boil it for at least one minute, or submerge the moss ball in chlorine bleach or undiluted white vinegar for 20 minutes. While there are not many ways you can individually help, these small steps you can take to prevent the spread of any type of invasive species can help. I recommend searching what non-native species are in your area and see what kinds of things you can do to help. For now, hitting the like button and sharing with a friend can help spread awareness. Thank you all for watching.